The following program was paid for by Latino Cleveland. This program was made possible by Global Cleveland, supporting the growth of Northeast Ohio's Hispanic community. Este programa es hecho gracias a Global Cleveland, respaldando el crecimiento de la comunidad hispana en el noreste de Ohio. And welcome back for another episode of Yo Soy Latino Cleveland, the only show dedicated to highlighting Northeast Ohio's Hispanic community. I'm Maya Rosario, your host, and I'm so excited you can join us this afternoon. It's really great to be with you this new, at this new day and time, Fridays every day, every Friday from 1230. If you're new to Yo Soy Latino Cleveland, I encourage you to check out all our old episodes on latinocleveland.com, where you can learn about some of the amazing local business businesses, great restaurants, and important community and health education uh, specific to the Hispanic community. Uh, today's show is really exciting. We will be seeing the first episode of Idea Home Health's mini-series featuring a local Latino family and their personal story. Uh, we will also have the fir very first episode of Así Vive Mejor, which is To Live Better, a story, Gina's Journey. Uh, this is an amazing story of transformation. You won't want to miss that. And later in the show, Danny is taking us to Julian Tavares' home for an interview and a private behind the scenes glimpse of his personal collection from the Cleveland Indians. And uh, here with us now is Lisa Wheeler Cooper from the American Heart Association. How thank are you? I'm well, thanks for having me. No, thank you. This is like a really big issue not just in general, but also in the Latino community, right? It is. So overall, heart disease is the number one killer for um, all Americans, but in the Latino community, they are at greater risk because of things like diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. Wow, yeah, that is a big issue. Now, um, before I learn more about that, now you have a partnership with Neomed, which is one of our sponsors. Can you share with that? Yes, yeah. we're excited to partner with Neomed. They are the sponsor of our upcoming Heart Walk mm -hmm. that's on October 17th at the Neomed campus. And Dr. Sussman is the Dean of Medicine and he's chairing the 2015 Heart Walk and we're really excited for his leadership and support of the event. That's awesome. So the American Heart Association, what exactly do you guys do for the general population? So the American Heart Association, we're here to build healthier lives free of mm -hmm. cardiovascular diseases and stroke. And we do that through a variety of, of ways, primarily through our cardiovascular and stroke research. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of our number one priorities. Mm -hmm. And also we do a lot of community outreach to different underserved populations mm -hmm. and low economical um, communities to make sure that they have the resources and tools that they need to live a healthier life. So um, what are some of the signs or ways to prevent the, you know, this type of disease? So two things. So the signs, for example, in women, we talked a little bit about that, are a little um, different. They present mm -hmm. themselves a little different in women. So sometimes women go undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. So for example, a woman might feel nauseated or she may mm. be dizzy or have a headache for mm. no, um, no reason and sometimes those are um, overlooked because those are things that people experience right. sometimes on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to mm -hmm. seek out your medical physician because we all know our bodies and we know when something isn't quite right. So right. when your, your normal is different, we always advise you to seek out medical advice from wow. your physician. Now you actually have, um, for the Hispanic community, you have a program for them, right? Yes, yeah, so one of the programs that we're excited about is Go Red Poor Two Quarter Zone. Okay. And that is part of our Go Red for Women campaign where we are raising awareness among women that heart disease is their number one health risk. So um, Go Red Poor Two Quarter Zone has a lot of Spanish language materials nice. that are available. There's a dedicated website okay. with tools and resources that individuals can access on an ongoing basis. That's wonderful. Now, before we wrap up, can you share again information about 
the event? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the Heart Walk is Saturday, October 17th at the Neomed campus. Um, oh, cool. The festivities start at 9 a.m. and the walk kicks off at 10 a.m. and we're inviting all of the viewers in that area to come out and support us. Now is there a pre-registration or a fee associated? So. The Heart Walk, we, the walkers raise funds by asking friends and family for donations. Oh, okay. And if you haven't registered for the event, we do take donations um, at the event. Okay. And you can get more information about the event on our website at heart.org. Awesome, thank you so much for coming. Um, okay, stay tuned because when we brief, we'll, we'll be right back after this short break and viewing the very first episode of Ideal Home Helps mini series featuring a local family and their real life story. We'll be right back. Yeah, when I got that call at 3 o'clock in the morning, actually, he said he wasn't feeling well. And I was like, what's going on? He goes, I'm not feeling well. My heart is racing. I can't breathe. And I said, okay, Bobby, I'm going to call 911. Just hang in there. And I did. I called from here. And sure enough, they picked him up right away. And that's when he was admitted. I was afraid of losing him. I already lost my mom. When he got to Metro Hospital, uh, he was very weak. Turned out that he was bleeding internally. And he also has high blood pressure, so it would, they weren't sure exactly what was going on until they did an ultrasound. And that's when they found the bleeding. Once he got a little better, they wanted to send him to a nursing home. That's not what he wanted. He wanted to either go home or come here, to my home. And we did, we brought him home after that. When they, the nurses came in, they were so wonderful. I, had, I mean, they're beautiful, they're, they're very caring, and they know how to explain everything, because I have so many, I had so many questions, and um, they were there to answer. Thank God to Ideal Home Health Care. I learned a lot. I'm blessed. I'm still blessed to have him, to be able to care for him. I cared for my mom when she was with hospice. She died in my arms, but I cared for her to the end, and I will do the same for my dad. He would not go to the nursing home. No, no, no. Wow, what a touching story. I'm sure that many of us, if not all of us, can relate to the feeling of a love and devotion to our parents and the loved one and the emotions and the fears we feel when they faced an emergency or a life-changing situation. Um, remember, Lillian and Hector's story will continue next week, to make so make sure you check it out and come back for this continuation. When we return, Danny will, will be taking us to Julian Tavares' home for a very special tour. And then following that, we will have our Entu Ciudad, our community calendar to share with you. So stay tuned. Hello, Danny. Hey, Julian. Chiquito. Como esta? Fantastic. Yeah. Welcome to my town. Thank you. That's my house. <laughs> Hola, mi gente. Danny Orellana here for Yo Soy Latino Cleveland. And today I am with my friend Julian Tavares from the Cleveland Indians, former pitcher. And he's welcomed me into his home. Welcome you as well. Hey, Danny, hey, let me show you something. Let me show you a little bit about my collection. Let's Come go. This is, this is my favorite place here. Look, Danny. This is my Indian collections out here. All my base was tough, see? I got my India, my 1995. Nobody has money to buy this, because it's not for sale. This is amazing here. <laughs> you like it? This is just a... Uh, Look. A fan... This is, this is a fan's dream here. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more of what you have going on here, because this is obviously a love of baseball. It's not just Tavares. It's not just Indians. It's baseball in general, and I am just in awe. Well, Danny, look, what I do, you know, I play for 11 different teams, and uh, I like to collect baseball stuff, because I love baseball. Even though I retire, I still love baseball, and I always do. I go to support my Indian every time I can. I go down in the state and progress it. Look, I got my World Baseball Classic, my first one, 2006, representing my Dominican country. Of course. My Indian 1995 World Series, you know, this is my Coco Crips. Coco yes, is a good are. friend of mine. David Ortiz, Big Poppy. You know, Jonathan Popovon, good teammate. My Sammy Sosa from Dominican. See? Got my Sammy, Big Poppy, 95. Now, we all know you're good friends with uh, Manny. What about Manny? Oh, let me show you something about Manny. Look, I collect Manny jersey. 
I collect Manny jersey. Why it's Manny? He's my good friend. You know, this is our star game. My good friend. And if Manny see the show, Manny, hello. I know you're working with the cop. Go cops too, <laughs> you know. I, I run it for the cop. Now that takes me to my favorite piece here in oh. this room. It has to be this picture here in the corner. Tell us a little bit more about that. This is my Latino connection. This is my 95. You want to know who they are? Those Let's are see all I, familiar if faces. I Those are all familiar faces. Tony Pina, Alvaro Espinosa, Jose Mesa, Denny Martinez, El Presidente of Nicaragua, Sandy Alomar, Julio Franco, Carlos Barrega, Manny Ramirez. And you know who it is, right? Tavares. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah, this now is my this Latino is a, connection. You obviously have lived an amazing life. You've accomplished a lot. Why don't, it wasn't always like that. Uh, tell us a little bit more about growing up in uh, the Dominican Republic. Uh, yes, I can tell you something about that. My life wasn't that easy. That was a rough life. You know, I grew up being away from my dad. My dad used to work uh, construction about two hours away from my city. My mama used to work in the tobacco factory from seven in the morning to seven at night. And I used to stay in a small house, one bedroom house with my sister. And uh, a lot of time to feed my stomach, I had to go clean shoes, do a favor for people, you know. And uh, they watched me growing up and uh, some people, they make fun of me, saying that I wasn't gonna make it because my life was rough, it was tough. Wow. Even my mom, you know, she said, why you just don't quit playing ball? I said, mom, my dream is to be a baseball player. And I will. I believe God say, I will help you if you help yourself. If you believe in yourself, I believe in you can do it. And when did you know, when did you just have that gut feeling that you knew you were gonna be a major league baseball player? Since people started to make fun of me, since I was like 12, they all say I'm not gonna make it. They all laughing at me, because I was so skinny, you know. They say, this guy had no lunch in his house, no clothes, nothing. How he think he's gonna be a major league baseball player? Look here, look here, so skinny. Oh yeah, you're gonna be a major league baseball player. Yeah, all right. That gave me some strength for me to continue and try harder and harder and harder. Prove them wrong. Yeah, and prove myself that I can do it too. So, Donald Down came to the Dominican Republic when I was 16 years old in Winston Jenna, and they have an Indian tryout and uh, they saw me, you know, and uh, they just uh, offered me a thousand dollars and I signed with the Indian. So I was uh, one of the lucky one, you know, so the Indian gave me a chance right away to play in the major league. And I'm glad they did. Yeah, I'm glad they did too, you know. I put out some number down there and they don't want to call me up because I cannot speak English. I cannot speak English, I was like, how can we bring this kid to the major league? Now you've been all over the country and why Cleveland home? Oh, Cleveland, first of all, because my son Trent, right here. My son Trent, I love Trent very much, and that's where he lives. And uh, number two, Cleveland is the best city out of 51 states, I believe it is in the United States. I never went to college, but I believe it's 51. Cleveland to me is number one to raise a child. Number three, the fans. The fans are so nice, they recognize me everywhere I go. They're really nice to me in the mall when I go out to eat. You know, they still love me like I'm still active, like I'm still playing with them. We do, we do. And I, <laughs> I thank you for having me, bringing me into your home, Julian. It was a pleasure. And um, folks, for those of you who are just tuning in right now, if you want to catch up, make sure you log on to latinocleveland.com and stay tuned to WKYC, because when we come back, you'll have more Just Latino Cleveland right after this. And you might see Chiquito going deep. <laughs> <laughs> That's all against me, you know? <laughs> I might throw my slider to Chiquito, you know? <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you for having me.
Welcome back to Josue Latino Cleveland and to Surat is our community calendar of events coming up. There's always something happening in Cleveland and usually more than we can report. But if you have an event coming up, let us know on latinocleveland.com. Let's check out what's happening in our community. And we, when we return, it will be premiering the first ever Así Vive Mejor, our new mini novela, little series, soap opera, <laughs> featuring Gina Velasquez and her journey. Stick around. Welcome back to Josue Latino Cleveland. I'm excited to introduce to you our newest addition to the show, our mini novela, which is a little soap opera called A uh, Si Vive Mejor, which means to live better. In this series, we will be following Gina on her journey through plastic surgery with Dr. Corey. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is Gina Velasquez. I am 39 years old, a mother of two, uh, I live on the west side of Cleveland, right in the heart, inner city. I love food, food doesn't love me. <laughs> so I have to constantly monitor my intake or uh, modify uh, maybe home recipes so I can still en enjoy that taste and get that satisfaction, but yet not uh, go over the calorie intake that, that my body says I should have. I like to be modest. I want to stay humble. Um, why? I think my mom instilled that into me and my family. Um, you would want someone to like you for who you are. And, and I love my image. I just want to improve it or enhance it back to maybe my youthful years. Realistically, you won't get those back, but as close as I would possibly could. I have been recently thinking of plastic surgery, electric surgery, uh, I want to say maybe over a year. Um, realistically, as we go grow older, gravity sinks in, or after having children, the electricity of your abdominal is not as strong as it was prior to having children. So we can exercise and eat a healthy diet, try to maintain a healthy lifestyle as possible, but there are some things there that in our body that we would like to improve and I w I'm at that point in my life where obviously I'm not going to have any more children so that is a benefactor um, so I want to improve um, my abdominal muscles again maybe obtain a nice smooth stomach and minimize my breast uh, again with gravity sinks in so you want to bring that up and have a nice lift, natural, look natural at the same time. I did talk with a friend of mine. I was impressed of her surgery. Uh, I really liked her results and also another working class, middle class woman. And so that made it more intriguing for me for my own interest that I want to achieve in life that, uh, that this is possible. I am going to call the Dr. Corey's office and set up a, my initial consultation. I'm just going in optimistic. Let's, I'm just going in to find out what can I do. Is this right for me at this point in my life? Um, am I able to financially obtain this in my life right now? Or do I have to look at, at it maybe down the road? I can't wait to see what happens next week as Gina explores her options. Stick around, we'll be right back after this short break. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. And if you'd like to catch up on other great episodes, you can log on to latinocleveland.com. I'll see you here next Friday at 1230 on WKYC Channel 3. Thank you.